Hello and welcome uh, to the Wilcom video short, the digital edition. Today we're going to learn how to use the Florentine liquid and contour stitch effect tools. These particular tools inside the Wilcom digital edition of the software, first we're going to start with our contour tool. The contour tool, and this is what it looks like in the Wilcom workspace. What this allows us to do, this allows us to go in and create a fill area that conforms to the shape of the object. I'll choose my complex fill tool. I'll navigate and I'll select my contour tool. And now I'm going to start digitizing my shape. Very simple. As I go in, place my node points on the screen. As I press enter, I enter my entry point and my exit point, and there is my fill. So what happens with this, this particular fill type here, as I'm working with, this is what this looks like. With the contour effect also, you have the ability to go in and adjust the settings here. You can adjust the spacing. The spacing is at now 7.2. If I make this 5.0 and press enter, you'll see that the density closes in as I tighten that stitch density on this particular fill type here. I can also go in and choose my reshape mode. I can adjust and change my starting and exit points. And I could also click on my stitch angle and bring this down. And I can change my stitch angle. As I change the stitch angle, you can see the shape here as it adjusts based on the different stitch angles that I choose for this particular object on the screen. And this is what that looks like. With this particular tool, keep in mind that because it is a contour tool and because it is a tool that follows the shape here of the contour, keep in mind that the density does not change with this particular fill type here. It stays the same. So you do have to be careful about how wide your objects are here as far as your positioning here of the shape. That is your contour tool. Next, we're going to take a look at the Florentine effect. This particular tool here allows you to go in and use a Florentine effect fill within a fill area. To activate this, I'll navigate. I'll choose my complex fill tool. I'll choose my tatami setting. And I'm going to navigate over here and I'll select and choose my Florentine effect. Once I do this, now I'm able to go in and create my shape. I'll start here at the top. And as I go in and as I create my shape, This will allow me to go in, and adjust and change this stitch angle on this particular fill type here. As I go in, as you can see, I'm gonna press enter to close the shape. I enter my entry point here and my exit point here. And now I'll do my stitch angle. This is a stitch angle here that you can actually curve. And that's what makes this one unique As I press enter. And now I'm going to navigate to my pick tool. And now inside my object properties. And inside my object properties now with my fill type, as I right click object properties and here I can go to my fills here for my spacing. I could adjust this. I'll make this 3.0. With this fill type, I'm able now to go in and I can adjust my stitch angle here when you choose this particular fill type. And as I open a density for this particular fill type, you see the lines underneath my fill that are going through my object here. As you can see this stitch on the screen. What I can do for this, we have a tool here, your Trapunto. And as I select this Trapunto tool here, it forces all of the underlying stitches to the outside of my fill area here, giving me a very, very nice shape here that I can go in and use the shape. And if I want to go in and change the shape, I can feel free to click on my reshape tool and I can adjust the stitch angle by going in and moving the no points here to adjust the stitch angle 
to the stitch angle that I want to use for my particular fill type here. This is the Florentine effect inside the Wilcom Embroidery Studio Digital Edition. The next tool that we're going to take a look at is the liquid effect tool. This tool allows us to go in and use a tatami stitch fill with a tatami setting. And this time we'll go in and we'll select this icon. This icon is different than any of the other icons because this time this will allow us to go in and do two stitch angles in one object. As I go in and digitize the outline here of my football, once I get that outline finished here, I'll press enter. I enter my entry point here and my exit point here at the end. Now at this point now, I can go in and do my stitch angle for side one of my object. This is side one, so I'll left click here, right click at 12 o'clock here. And once I get that side A completed, I'll just press enter. And now that lets me do side two, like this. And once this is completed, I'll just press enter. And it fills this in. To take a good look at what this looks like, again, we'll select our pick tool. And we'll go in here with this, and we're going to open up the density for this also. Let's make this 3.0. As I press enter, and I'm also going to hide the bitmap image in the background. You will see the shape here that's taking place with using this. And as I click on my reshape tool, you'll see the two different stitch angles. This is a very complex fill type to do here. The running stitches underneath this, we can move those to the outside by simply navigating up top, clicking on our Tripunto tool like this. These are some great stitch types and fills that you can use inside the Embroidery Studio software to enhance your embroidery. That's gonna do it for this short. Thank you for your time today. Hope that you learned something. And as always, happy digitizing.